Okay, and it looks like our players are ready to go. EG and Subsons are there. Let's go ahead and switch our view to the game. They have the same colors. Two games in a row. Not possible. How? Uh, I need to call select real quick. Totally, un <laughs> totally unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get things started here. Hopefully other people have been uh, talking about the PTSL as well. Don't forget to tweet all of your friends and everything like that and let them know that this awesome tournament is going on. We do appreciate all the support we get. Game has started. Let's go ahead and get things going. So down here at the 6 o'clock position, we have Dignitas Select. Spawning is our blue Terran player. His teammate from Sup Suns is Optic Zero. From FXO, he is our pink Protoss player. Their opponents... Here, from Team Evil Geniuses, we have Axlov, spawning as our red Terran player at the 12 o'clock position, and his teammate, our yellow Zerg player, that is EG Strife Crow. And right now, select an Optic Zero, as you can tell from that custom scoreboard from Akaya. <laughs> yes. Scores 1-0 in favor of Team Sub Suns. That means Axlov and Strife Crow are on a four-game slide right now, and this is a map that they played against Assassins uh, to sort of finish things up and just did not quite work out for them. Um, Select, notorious for building Banshees all the time, could actually work out quite well for him since he is put opposite of Strife Crow, and that's basically the exact same thing Druby did to him in that winner's bracket final. So if Select just sticks to what he's normally doing, he might actually find some success with that same sort of strategy. Uh, Hellion's also a key component of um, that sort of strategy, just being able to fend off early Zerglings and Marines with Hellions is, is quite a nice thing to have. <laughs> Absolutely, and if Select and Optic Zero are able to establish control here, um, you know, get down a couple of the key siege tanks right here in the middle in between the bases, they'll be able to take their expansions pretty easily as well. So, excuse me, so we could see that very heavy Stargate play pretty easily out of Optic Zero. Up here, though, Looks like Strife Crow has donated a drone and thus an extractor to the Evil Genius's cause. Axlov is currently mining from that. He has his barracks down, but everything looks pretty standard. Strife Crow did get out his uh, gas. He's going to be saving up for that early Zergling speed, or so I would imagine. Optic Zero, on the other hand, just putting down a wall, making sure he has double pylons at the front there. No Artosis pylon, just powering all those structures off of one. And Select is building himself a wall, so everything looks pretty standard for a big ol' fat macro game. Yeah, Axlav getting that super fast gas lets him get that factory up before Select is able to. If Select is indeed headed for that quick Banshee again, uh, he will be a little bit slower than his Terran counterpart there in Axlav, just because of that donated extractor. The... Factory being that quick could also lend itself to a lot of Ling and Hellion pressure early on and there is a reactor being built on a barrack so I'm wondering if that's going to be a swap and if it is that Hellion Ling pressure is going to be very very likely. Zergling speed has already been started and by the time it finishes Strifecar will have a ton of Lings prepared and I haven't seen a drone again in a while. Axlab hasn't built an SCV and isn't for the time being so this could just be Hellion Ling sort of all in early game like we saw out of Assassins a couple of times throughout the tournament. And they are going to have to go against Optic Zero, because Optic Zero does tend to commit to tech. In addition, he only has the one unit up. There we go. There's That's a probe that puts tight. down a uh, pylon. Let's see. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> All right, but he's going to be able to take this down. Oh, and he gets the surround on the Zealot. He needs to commit his other uh, Zerglings in. There we go. So the Zealot does go down. They're not going to get their way over to the right. Looks like this is a tight wall through here as well. Yep, no, looks like Strife Crow did just decide to test that, and he's not going to be able to bust his way through. Uh, however, with good Hellion pressure, they're going to be able to take out these sentries pretty easily if they want to. We do have our first couple of Hellions making their way out at the moment. There's an SCV that was kind of milling about to the right, to the left as well, and that starport is being started. This is a bunch of links coming up, and we see the same tech lab and starport coming out of Select. And Zergling Speed has been finished now. Strife Crow making that second hatchery there at his natural and still just spamming lings. Have not seen a drone in a while. Again, Axlev not building any SCVs currently, spending everything on these Hellions and Starport. There's an SCV building, but um, like you said earlier, the Hellions are going to help against the sentries if they don't run away and they have to stay out of range of the Hellions so they can't use their tickle lasers against the Zerglings. So uh, it's just kind of a, a interesting back and forth here. Axlev and Strifeco really aren't focusing on anything, though, and 
I mean, that Stalker unfortunately popped out on the wrong side for Optic Zero. That'd definitely help a lot more if it was on the inside of the wall, but one pylon may fall and the, the wall is still intact, so really, uh, Axelav and Striker just committed a lot of units there and didn't actually kill much except for a Stalker. No, they did not. We do have a Tech Lab coming up on the Starport here, but it's already finished for Select. He's going to go into a Banshee and already has Siege Tanks with Siege Mode finished at the time, so this is still going to be pretty difficult for Evil Geniuses to go ahead and break. They're going to try and go after this Gateway right away, uh, but there are so many units up here, and Optic Zero is poking away at these Hellions, and that is going to take away a lot of their defense. Look at this, Optic Zero just building this wall back until Select can actually come in and reinforce, and it's going to force Evil Geniuses away here for the moment. This pylon is actually almost down. Let's see if they go after that one. They are down to 50 points of health, and it does fall. Is the it's wall tight. still solid? It <laughs> is. That force field placement is actually really key out of Optic Zero. I don't see another sentry in production or anything, but three more gateways are going down sort of all over the place, reinforcing that wall even further. Now Select has the siege tanks and marines. Uh, looks like some wings are going to try and shoot on those siege tanks, but if the marines can stay alive, we'll be able to hold this off. Four tanks. If the tanks die to two Zerglings, they'll be so sad if both tanks go down. The Banshee just does not have a fast enough rate of fire, but all both of those tanks do get taken out by just three little Zerglings. And now Select and Optic Zero are, you know, they've got some time to breathe, and that Banshee is up. Doesn't really have any anti-air to contend with out of Strife Crow. I don't believe I've seen an Evolution Chamber or any Spore Crawlers or anything like that, so if he can power through a Queen or two, uh, those drones will be free. Yep, and we do have a third queen being added to the mix for Strife Crow. That's going to be his anti-air of choice. Taking a look at the um, supply tab, looks like Subsuns has a small advantage, but it's not ginormous at the moment. This Banshee is going to be forced off, not really going to be able to get all that many more kills. It got a few Zergling kills down here, that's why its kill count looks a little inflated. Uh, it only killed one drone here in the top right. Strife Crow does have three queens down, and he is connecting the creep between these bases, so he's going to have pretty good mobility on those units as well. Axelov, on the other hand, though, is just finishing up his command center, so he is going to try and expand, but Select is one step ahead of him. Optic Zero, because he had to commit so many resources to defending there, uh, not really going to have that luxury. He is taking down this pylon, and that is no longer a tight wall. All of those units squeezing through a seemingly um, incredibly tight alley. Yeah, Optic Zero now has his four gate and his favorite thing in the world, that is the Stargate. Phoenixes have begun producing and select. Are you going to be able to defend against these links? You've only got a single siege tank and a handful of marines. This could actually be kind of gruesome, but Optic Zero is here to save the day. Did he get the cancel? I actually don't know, but uh, looks like... Yeah, because he had enough resources left over to start to one right away. One, yeah, yeah. So I think he did get the cancel and just immediately rebuilt after getting those tier 1 units down there to save the day. Hellions and Lings and Marines. Medivax, wow, this is actually a pretty crazy unit composition here. Out of Axelive, he's got kind of one of everything. And uh, he's loading up two Hellions. I don't believe they have blue flame upgrade. It really would no. surprise me if he did, but uh, he is going to gun it over there towards Select Space, where there's actually not anything uh, there to defend at this moment. So it could be a pretty decent option. I did see an Evolution Chamber come down for Strife Crow, so he does have the capacity for Sport Crawlers. Not sure if he actually did build any. doesn't look like it. So, so so Hellions are in the main of Select. This is actually the first drop I've seen. It might be the first drop I've seen today. Um, yesterday we did see a few on those larger maps, but yeah. that got shut down way faster than I thought. Select was very quick to pull those SCVs. May have only lost one or two there in that encounter before cleaning up those Hellions and getting that meta back out of there. Phoenix is on the field now, four of them. There's a Raven on the field. That's the first Raven I'd seen in this entire tournament as well, and it went down incredibly quickly to those four Phoenixes, and now more support showing up here. Optic Zero trying to just pick off Medivacs, anything that is floating around. Maybe he'll run into an Overlord at some point as well, score some nice supply kills there against Strife Crow. And let's see what Axel can do to come back from this. He is in a pretty bad position, honestly. He lost that very expensive Raven. He lost one of his Medivacs. Uh, I believe he lost his Viking as well just to kill one Phoenix. Now there are a couple of Spore Crawlers coming up, but these Queens are going to have to be brought in, and unfortunately two of them are picked up at the moment. None of them have died, though. Nice transfusion went down, and they actually did get one Phoenix kill, so that was a pretty good little defense there from Strife Crow. Yeah, more sprawl, uh, spore crawlers, not sprawlers, coming down. <laughs> uh, soon they will be able to help defend, and those phoenixes will be a little bit mitigated. But once you see that transition into void rays, 
then things get a little bit hairier, and Select has done a good job. It always gets that early Banshee, never commits too much. You never really see more than three, and then he just gets that Marine tank combo that's so potent. He's got Stim, he's got Combat Shields, no uh, upgrades on anything yet other than those, you know, as far as weapons and armor, but he's just got a lot of units, and right now I don't think X-Lev and Strife Crow will be able to hold up very well, especially if these Phoenixes lift the Siege tanks, allowing Select to just walk into Mordor, so to speak. There go all the Siege tank lifts. Uh, Marines stimming up, Guardian Shield going up all over those units from Optic Zero, and Axelab retreats. Strifeco really doesn't even have anything here to help defend. He's morphing some Banelings right there on the edge of the creep, but they're going to get lifted oh, up and so Phoenixed cute. down. They do burst in midair. Did you know that? They'll still do their damage if they're actually uh, intact. Those were right. just cocoons, but uh, that's not going to matter. So the Queen goes down. There's nothing there left to defend. Strifeco and Axelab both and GG out of there, and now select an Optic Zero taking a 2-0 lead here in the winner's final. It is a best of five series, and Axelab and Strifecore are on a five-game slide right now. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see what they can do to try to come back. They tried to shift gears and go into that heavy aggression mode with that Zergling and um, Hellion build, but unfortunately they weren't really able to get positioning on their units. Optic Zero had a pretty nice hold, and really all he had to do was tread water because of the way Select was just massing up his uh, tech and his units. So very nice uh, gameplay there out of Select and Optic Zero. Game number three is going to start 